Almighty God, we give thanks for the gift of music. We give thanks for all your blessings. Now, Lord, let this moment be yours, not mine. Enlighten our minds, soften our hearts, and unify us that we might live out your word. May the words that I speak, O oh God, bring you praise and never, never shame. In Jesus' name, amen. Summon for this blessed morning, Conversations with the Father. Conversations with the Father. Those of us who are old enough and blessed enough to have lived through the 60s, remember the uh, beginning of protest music. African-American musicians who felt the need to be involved in the struggle started singing songs and writing songs about injustice, about making the world better, about equality, about so many things, and we call it protest music. One of the most powerful protest songs, I believe, came out in the 1970s. It was sung by the Temptations called A Ball of Confusion. It said, that's what the world is today. It talked about the only person uh, talking, making sensible talk about life would be the preacher. Only person interested in teaching was the teacher. Inequality, segregation, integration, people moving out because of the color of their skin. So many powerful lines about life and about what life ought to be like. And one of the main questions being asked in congregations and being asked all over the world, one of the main questions is, this, have you talked to God? And that's the question that should be asked on a daily basis for those of us who are in a world that still seems like a ball of confusion. That song is 50 years old. Half a century later, the world's population has doubled. And all the issues that were raised in 1970 still linger with us today. Inequality, in, injustice, racism, sexism, all of those evil politicians, all of those things are happening. And the question still is, who's listening to God? This is a short New Testament scripture. It talks about Jesus had the disciples go away. He went away and he prayed and he was alone. We live in a world where we love to be with folk. We love to socialize. We love to party. We love to congregate. Uh, this epidemic has made that hard for us when it happened again. But even in our desire to be with one another, even in our desire, to our hunger to be with people, God also knows that you and I need to sometimes get away and we need to pray and we need to be alone. Alone time for Christian folk is not talked about enough, is not preached about enough. But every generation Every generation has talked about prayer closets, what it means to be alone and to find your secret place, find your private place where you can have conversation with God. So prayer is having conversation with God. Sometimes we have prayers of adoration where we just talk about how wonderful God is and the power of God. Sometimes we petition God for others. Sometimes we petition God for ourselves. Sometimes we want intercessory prayer. I pray for somebody who's hurting out there. And sometimes it's just praise. We just dance and shout and say, Lord, I'm just glad to be in this world today. So many forms of prayer, but it's all talking to God. And it's got to be part of your DNA. It can't be uh, once a month. It can't be once a year. It's got to be something that you just naturally do. Like you talk to your children, like you talk to your mom, you got to talk to God. When my mother was living, I talked to my mother almost every day. My best friend, my brother Vincent, I talked to him every day because I can do that. And if I can talk to my best friend, if I can talk to my mother, the creative at all, I ought to be talking to God on a daily basis. And when I talk to God, it prevents me, it helps me to find proper guidance. It helps me to make right decisions. Uh, from the fourth grade to the 10th grade, I went to a black school and all of us who've gone to black schools know that there's something magical, there was something magical about going to a black school. Not only did we learn uh, uh, formal lessons, we learned so many informal lessons. We learned to memorize, we learned to 
how to treat people. We learned so many things. And our teachers were not just teachers, they were family. And some of them were our teachers and principals and, and coaches were like gods to us. And I remember my principal, uh, we call him Prop Malone. Every day he would come and ask me, have you talked to God? When I saw him, have you talked to God? I had no clue what this man was talking about. How does anybody talk to God? What does God say back to you? And since I've been, become an adult, I understand what talking to God means and I could not survive this life if I didn't talk to God. Because life is scary. All the things that might happen could happen, maybe should happen. We never know what's around each corner and I don't want to turn that corner by myself. I want to know that God is turning that corner with me. So I need my conversation with the Father. I need to be talking to God about what God desires for me to do in this world. Why make sure I know why God created me. He didn't create, he didn't create me just to live seven score and then and, and, and leave and, and not leave my mark on this world. He didn't create you. He created you to leave footprints in the sand. He created you to have your name in light somewhere, something that you've done that's significant. You may not be famous, but you can be famous in the kingdom of God for doing what God has called you to do. He went away, he prayed, he was alone. Find some alone time. Find some time just to be with God. I remind Christians on a daily basis, find some time to be with God. I remember counseling a young couple and uh, the young lady couldn't understand uh, why some Saturdays her husband had to just get away. He went fishing and she said, it was a commercial that talked about a man going off fishing and, and, and with his dog. And, and the woman said, all they ever brought back home was that old dog. Well, a man needed some time, some alone time. And we shouldn't begrudge anybody some alone time. Uh, I don't care how much you love your spouse, how much you love your children. It would behoove you to get away from them sometime to be able to talk to God and ask God, what would he have you to do? Just to relax and to rest. There's so many conflicting voices out there. Remember the song by Otis Redding sitting on the dock of the bay when he says, I can't do what 10 people tell me to do. And he's so right. There's one person on the left, one person on the right, one person behind you. Everybody's telling you what to do. Voices pounding in your head. And if you listen to all those voices, you'll go crazy. And sometimes you just sit on the dock of the, uh, dock of the bay. But when you listen to God, you stop all those other voices. Everything becomes quiet because you found a place to talk to God. You found a place to be with God. And as, you, as you've done that, you understand what alone time means. Alone time is a time of reflection, a time of looking inward, a time of, of just being, not doing, but being. Sometimes we get so caught up in doing. Our schedules are filled with doing, doing, doing. Take some time just to be. Take some alone time to sip a good cup of coffee. Take some alone time to read a good book. Take, take some alone, alone time just to reflect on life and, and, and take some alone time just to unravel your memories and take some alone time just to say, God, what would you have me to do? It's okay to be alone. It's okay to find some time. We understand we have responsibilities for family and spouse and all those kinds of things, and those things can get done. But if you don't take some time and refuel, if you don't take some time to reflect, then your marriage goes wacky, your, your, your peroon skills get wacky, because all you've done is not refuel, just kept pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing. Sometimes you just feel like you want to jump off a cliff. Take some time to slow down, anchor yourself, center yourself. Take some time, and when you take that time, you can reflect, and you can be thankful to God for the spouse you've been given, for the children you've been given, for the home you've been given. You can learn to appreciate how good God truly is, and you celebrate, dance in the kitchen, dance in the shower, tell God how thankful you are for what God has done for you. We don't have to compare what God has done for ourselves to what God has done for our brothers or our sisters. What God has for you is only for you. Your blessings God has for you, don't be jealous of anybody else's blessings. Just praise God that your brothers and your sisters have achieved. If they get a bigger house, so be it. That's what they needed. If they get a better car, so be it. That's what they needed. We don't gauge our lives 
on what somebody else has. We just thank God for what we have and we celebrate the victory of our brothers and our sisters. Are we listening to God? I am convinced the struggle we're having in Congress with politicians is before politicians, Republican or Democrat independent, they listen to God. I'm sure McCain listened to God. I am sure that Brother Lewis listened to God I am convinced that Kennedy listened to God. I'm convinced that Dr. King listened to God. I am solely convinced that when you listen to God, it makes a difference. But when you don't listen to God, you don't care if people struggle. If you don't listen to God, you do believe that the little bit of unemployment people are getting is too much for them. If you don't listen to God, everything is based on what you got and not what others need. But when you listen to God, you hear God say, be sympathetic, be empathetic, be involved. Listen, listen to God means that I have the sense to get or set myself apart, to find my alone space, whether I'm burning incense or lighting candles or whatever my ritual is, it's just me and God. And when it's me and God, I know that I'm not in this world I'm not in this world alone. I've got an anchor. I've got some support. And I'm thankful that I can have my conversation with God, which means I'm not telling God what to do. God is leading me. God is guiding me. God is directing me. And above all, when you take some alone time to be with God, you know how loved you are. And it's so easy to come back and love your family, to love the world, and to embrace the world, and to be a much better steward. When you take some time to be alone with God, you don't find excuses for not, not doing. You don't find excuses for uh, uh, justify why you haven't done what God calls you to do. One of the biggest issues for the Christian family is we're searching for answers when we don't do what God wants us to do. We're searching for reasons why. I mean, I'm not gonna support this because, I'm not gonna do this because. God calls you to do it, just do it. Celebrate with God, give to God, give yourself, give yourself, give you. Go to the altar and say, Lord, I'm not concerned about giving stuff right now. I just got to give me. And when I give me, my stuff will follow. When I lay myself prostrate on the altar and say, Lord, take me, lift me up, guide me, direct me, help me to break out of this shell, help me to be who you would have me to be. When God calls us to be who we need to be, we understand and know that we have a time and a season to be with God. There's a powerful story about two golden eagles who uh, flew the buddy plan. They, went, they saw the great mountains, the Alps, uh, Mount Everest. They flew all over the world together, just enjoying the world. And, and one evening, they got, one, the eagles got ready to fly away, fly out. And they asked his buddy, are you ready? And the buddy said, my time has come to a conclusion. I need you to go alone. I need you to continue doing what the father has called you to do. And his friend just couldn't understand. I can't do it without you. Sometimes we lose folks. Sometimes we, we somebody's journey, is over and we just feel like we can't go without them. But their memory ought to encourage us. This journey has been for a time. Their memory ought to encourage us that you still have things to do. If you lost a spouse, you lost your best friend, you don't give up. You still keep going. You give thanks to God for the journey with that person to this point and you keep on going. In my first appointment, I went to visit one of my members who had lost her husband. And she had been on the floor for three days, she said, just lying on the floor, could not get up because her total dependency was on her husband. He paid the bills, he, he drove her everywhere, he did everything, he made decisions for her. And she was unable to go on. It took us months and months to get her counseling and get her ready to say, this is not what God wants. You had a journey with him, and it might have been shorter than you expected, but you must live off the memory and trust that God will have you together again. But while you live, 
You can't stop living. You got to be what God wants you to be. You got to raise your head up, fly out alone until the time you are able to fly in glory with him. We are called to speak to God, to listen to God, and to hear God move us. If all the folk in this world are listening to God, it's got to be much better. When we're listening to the confusion and when we're listening to all the anger and the rage, we can be what God wants us to be. There are folk who would say that you got to be, you got to fight meanness with meanness. You got to fight hate with hate. And God says the true answer to all of the evil of the world is the love that we share, the love that we have for one another. And when you have that love, your singing is stronger. When you have that love, your work ethic is better. When you have that love, God knows who you are and you know who God is. Are you speaking to God? Is God speaking to you? Are you speaking to the Father? Wisdom comes from the Father. Our understanding comes from the Father. Our joy comes from the Father. Who we are as church folk comes from the Father. It is not our denominations that will save us. It is not our emblems. It is not the money we just, the money we give is not the service we give. All of that's been, our salvation has been paid for by the blood of Christ. Everything else we do comes out of our gratitude. We give to God out of our gratitude because we want to be responsible for making the kingdom of God better. So the challenge for all of us as we struggle, as we think about the situation that we're in, and as we have hope that this virus situation will get better, we understand that if we're talking to God, God will lead us and direct us. If we're talking to God, God tells us that it does make sense to wear a mask. If we're talking to God, it does, God says that the doctors know better than the president. If we're talking to God, if we're talking to God, God is leading us and directing us not to be judgmental, not to be evil and vicious, but to be kind, loving, and sharing. If we're talking to God, it means that we are God's people. If we're talking to God, it means that everything's going to be all right. If we're talking to God, it means that we have power. And when we have power, the world can't do us any harm. When we are talking to God, it makes a difference. And finally, when we're talking, after we talk to God, we've had our alone time, uh, we've done our prayer, then we are able to come back and talk to one another. Now, finally, what do we say to one another? Sometimes we just say to one another, I have been living a lie. Sometimes we say to one another, I'm not doing all I can do. Sometimes confession to one another is good for the soul. And when we're doing what God has called us to do, it's okay to say that, that you feel good about serving God. You feel good about loving God. When we come back to make the world a better place, then we have to understand that we were alone. We pray now how we treat each other matters. What will we say to somebody? Words hurt and words heal. How many times have we said something really ugly or nasty trying to be cute? And we don't know how scarred some souls are. You talk about somebody's hair, their weight, their clothes, their car, whatever you talk about, and you're trying to be cute and funny, and to them it feels like a put down. The world is already putting folk down enough. The world is already scarring us enough. If we can say things that will lift people and elevate people, if we can say things that come directly from God that says that I'm going to keep life positive, I'm going to keep life upbeat, no matter what I have to face. Have you seen so many people who are dealing with issues of stage four cancer, they're dealing with heart disease, they're dealing with near blindness, and in, in spite of all they're dealing with, they got this great joy. They've amassed all of this hope and belief that God is not going to leave them nor forsake them no matter what has happened because they're speaking to God and God says on a daily basis, I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to never leave you nor forsake you. It doesn't matter if you lose your, when you lose your job. It doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter how people treat you. I'm not going anywhere and we'll fix this. In due season, it will get fixed. May that get fixed. The same as God may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. And you see that, and people need to see God speaking to us. They need to know God speaking to us through our actions, through the way we treat one another, through the way we love one another. The great challenge is I've gone, I've been apart, now I've come back, and I'm ready to go to work. I've 
rested, I've prayed, I've been alone, and now I'm ready to engage the world. I'm ready to engage the world in a much better way. I'm ready to engage my church. I'm ready to engage my community. I'm ready to do what you call me to do, God. I am so excited, so joyful, and so happy that even as my life, as I get older and I have all these infirmities and all these things that are happening, Lord, I just understand that in, in time, things will change and you're going to be with me. And at the end of my journey, I'm able to say, thank you, Lord. As I speak, one of my dearest cousins in life, uh, Irene McDaniel in Chicago, in a hospital now, any minute, they stage four cancer, pneumonia, any minute, I'll get a call that says they pull the plug. We call her Rena, one of the best human beings God ever created, 69 years old. As far as I'm concerned, much too young to die. But somehow, in the midst of all this, what the family can remember is how kind and how wonderful Rena was, how she was the matriarch of her family, and how she was a glue to hell folk together. And the question will be for the family, who will step up and who will be that glue? Because Rena's memory ought to be the wind beneath our wings. That yes, they'll pull the plug on her, which simply means that God will plug something in in heaven. And her name, her picture will be hung on a great wall of immortality and she'll be home safe and sound, and no more pain. But only those who know Jesus Christ, who talk to the Father, will understand where Rena is going in a few hours. As painful as it is for me to lose her, I know that she's going to see the King, and I know that everything's gonna be all right. And I know that Rena always talked to the Father. So be it, amen, amen, and amen. Let us pray. Lord, our God, thank you for engaging us in conversation. Thank you, Lord, for directing our lives. I pray for my cousin and others who are facing difficult, difficult families, facing difficult situations. I ask you, Lord, to intervene and be with all of us. For those who are listening today to this broadcast, oh God, on Facebook, uh, allow them to be able to contact us. We have directions online for contacting us if they feel the need to become part of the family of God and talk further with the pastor. They have my number. So we don't want anybody to feel who feel called to join to be left out. For those who will be with us, staying with us, doing our glory sightings, you can share with us your glory. So it might just be that you feel the need to become a part of the family of God. So Lord, not my will, but your will. So inspire us to do what we need to do today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.